this Supreme Court, a third of it, three out of the nine, were appointed by Donald Trump and voting matters. And that had there been more black turnout in certain places, we may not have had those justices. Well, looky there. Al Sharpton can do the basic math. How about that? Isn't that wonderful? I know he knows how to look at his paycheck and figure how much he's getting paid from MSNBC. It's millions, I hear. Millions, I tell you. Oh, boy. Well, welcome to Monday. Welcome to Monday, July 3rd. It is Independence Day Eve. I think mail service is uh, happening today. Today's not a, a holiday. Tomorrow is. You know, usually we take that that Monday in a holiday week becomes the holiday. But when it's something as important as Independence Day, that's not how it works out. So you should be getting your mail today. I just know that uh, Tuesday's usually trash day at our house. So now Wednesday is trash day. I got that right. And I won't be looking for any uh, mail delivery tomorrow because the postal workers deserve that day off as well. So everybody, I hope you get a day off. Uh, I was talking about um, just just last hour I was talking about the um, the move to replace traditional fireworks with drones and drone shows. And uh, I'm I'm a big guy in technology. I love technology. I think AI could be a wonderful thing if we make sure it doesn't have the ability to take us out. But I'm 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 big big on traditional fireworks and I asked a lot of you what do you think because there are towns in California that are banning traditional fireworks and they're citing obviously air pollution water pollution potential for fires to start and then of course the people who say hey hey what about the dogs because it freaks out the animals and the animals get crazy and then someone brought up the bees now the bees are affected by this Aren't they all in their hives kind of sleeping away at night? I don't know if there are nighttime bee attacks. Maybe. We'll find out. But a bunch of you have decided to weigh in on the topic as well at uh, 888 here on the Chris Plant Show. Gary is in Walkersville, Maryland. Hello, Gary. Welcome to the Chris Plant Show. What's on your mind? Hello, Gary. I just wanted to let you know that I am in my 42nd year of commercial fireworks. I just drove fireworks down to Berryville, Virginia. I'm a hazmat driver. I'm on, on my way back to Walkersville. So I love fireworks. I'm in a, into anything that's artillery, and my wife is into the um, pretty stuff up in the air. She's in sales for the same company. So I'm in favor of you're not going to replace Macy's which is one of the best I've seen Um, with drones. Drone technology, I'm a geek, is coming a long way. Um, The stuff that goes up and comes down, gunpowder, cardboard, it's biodegradable. I don't believe there's any hazard that I'm aware of. I do agree with fire. We are always in a no-burn zone type of calendar here in Maryland, but we are allowed to do commercial fireworks legally. We have had some fires, which we try to put out first line, but there's always a fire department there with us if we can't get to it. But if you're out in the West and there's a fire hazard concern, yes, that would be a great place for the drone. So I know their technology is improving. It's kind of interesting to see common sense actually applied instead of blanket statements overall. And we know most of the banning has to do with the wokeism when it comes to wanting to say, well, we can't have, uh, we can't have the smoke in the air. We can't have, as you said, the gunpowder and, and the cardboard come raining down. And usually it is very biodegradable. I, I do get it though. When there's a fire risk, totally get it. So limit it. Maybe you hold it over water and you make sure it's over. If you can't, then you bring in the drones and why not a combination of both? Why can't we have both work together? Thank you, Gary. What a great career. 42 years in that career. Appreciate you being there. Thank you. Uh, Joe is in Fayetteville, Arkansas, listening on uh, 1030 AM. Hey, Joe, welcome to the Chris Plant Show. Yeah, thank you. I'm all in favor of fireworks, but I quit buying fireworks quite a few years ago 
because when I went to the fireworks stand and checked the labels on the fireworks, they were all made in China. And I just yeah. couldn't see celebrating our Independence Day with fireworks made in China. And that's why I voted for Trump in uh, 2016, was he was the only candidate, you know, talking against free trade and saying that he would uh, bring our manufacturing back from China. And I thought I think Trump would uh, should make a pledge, you know, right now, saying that if he gets elected president, he'll put a 200 percent tariff on all Chinese fireworks so that we can bring our fireworks manufacturing back to this country. I, I like the idea, and currently, you're right, the, the lion's share of fireworks being imported to America. China has over $350 million in fireworks imported the last time we took any kind of uh, evaluation of that, any kind of audit of that. Spain is a distant second with $3.5 million, followed by Thailand, Hong Kong, Japan, Germany, Mexico, and Italy. We don't even make, really, fireworks to speak of here in this country. So the pyrotechnics business is owned and pretty much operated by China. And I'm guessing they might have a a leg up on the drone world too, which is probably a little bit more nefarious because they can probably monitor uh, the the drone shows and feedback information. It's uh, it's something I get a little nervous about. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate you being there. Jim is uh, listening on uh, the iHeart app on uh, 12.30 a.m. on Long Island. Hello, Jim. Welcome to the Chris Blant Show. Yeah. Good morning, Mike. Yeah, my take on this is a little bit different. I mean, here on Long Island, we have the Garucci family. They make their fireworks. Oh, yeah. They put on many displays. Legends. They are legends. Yeah, and, uh, you know, being in New York, you know, a lot of freedoms, little by little, being taken away. And I believe that this is another step in the many baby steps that they are taking to remove American traditions. It's, it's, I can see that. I can see that. But uh, it, it is one of those things that maybe, just maybe, we stand up and say this is something that has to be, that has to be kept. And I, I don't like bringing in all the Chinese fireworks. I'd like us to see more American fireworks or from friends of ours, not from people who would like us to all go away. And that's kind of where I think we are right now. Thank you, Jim. I miss the Grucci shows. They were the best. And uh, especially the Macy's show when we lived in Manhattan, you could see them from our balcony. We could sit out on July 4th and watch those shows. They were absolutely stunning. It's better in person than on TV for me. But, you know, they'll still show them on TV. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate you. Uh, Patrick. Patrick is listening on the WMAL app out in Arizona. Hello, Patrick. Welcome to the program. Hey, how y'all doing? I actually live in Southern Maryland, but I'll take Arizona for right now. So I got uh, two things to say. One is you did forget about New Year's Eve for fireworks, but I'll mm-hmm. let that slide. That's <laughs> true. That's a, Well, you know, we don't do this. We don't even do it monthly. We do it a couple of times a year, and New Year's Eve is a big one, too. You're right. Correct. And I am pro fireworks. But I also look at it as like this. If they replace everything with drones, that's another way for them to erase our past, our history. So, like, our Fourth of July never occurred, our freedoms. Yeah, are we going to have to change the national anthem and put in a new verse and say, and the drone's red glare shining in the air? Is that going to happen? Not on my watch. No, well, I mean, you can look at it. We can enforce our Second Amendment and just shoot them out of the sky, and they'll explode. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> well, I, while I understand that, that behavior, I can't necessarily endorse it because you know some communities have strict laws about shooting down drones. Be careful, people. Be smart. Uh, thank you, Patrick. Appreciate you. Uh, let's grab one more on this topic because I think it's a great topic. Ken is in Kentucky. Welcome to the program, Ken. What's on your mind? Yeah, I'd like to uh, address this in two issues. One, okay. I have a hundred, I have a hundred and fifteen pound German Shepherd, and when these things go off, I've got a fur coat on because he will climb up on my shoulder. Mm. It ter- it terrorizes the hell out of me. Two, have you tried? Uh, wait, 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 Ken. Hang on one second. Have you tried the thunder shirt thing I keep seeing on TV? It's oh, like a does it work? Yeah, that, 
no, that's a joke. But people make money off of it. That's good for them. Uh, the second thing is I'm a fully disabled vet, okay? And I know there's a lot of other, my brothers out there, same way. If you want fireworks and you like explosions and all that good stuff, hey, join the military because you'll get all you can stand and mm. you might get more than you really like. Can your uh, service to this country is appreciated more than we will ever be able to tell you. And uh, I, it, here's the here's the bizarre thing about the dog issue. You have a 110 pound shepherd. We have an eight pound toy poodle. The poodle sleeps during the fireworks, and it's I I don't understand. My wife said it this morning. We were talking about the topic, and I said I want to go to this topic, and she said I'm always amazed that. The little dogs don't seem to care, but the big dogs get more frightened. And I wonder if there's something there. I, I hope you have a quiet night for your sake, Ken, and for your dog's sake. But again, we appreciate your service. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Uh, one, okay, one more and then we'll go to break. Dave is in Silver Spring, Maryland. Dave, welcome to the Chris Plant Show. Hi, you don't sound like Chris. How are you today? Happy July 4th. Now, this, yes, thank uh, you. All- in my uh, community here, and uh, I'll say only near Route 28, we had Juneteenth fireworks again this year, and it doesn't look likely we'll all celebrate Independence Day with all the people that celebrated Juneteenth. Uh, are you familiar with the history of Juneteenth? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Are you telling me, me that me in that Maryland, where, where you live in Maryland, they celebrated Juneteenth, one of the newer national holidays with fireworks, but you're not going to have fireworks uh, for Independence Day, 4th of July? For the second year in a row, that is correct. So wow. So celebrating, uh, you know, July 4th is a united country with all the freed people and all the people people and all the other people together. Now they want to go ahead and celebrate their own. Because they're the well, last I was supposed to hear about the end of the Civil War, which I'm sorry, but the war did end, and here we are today. You weren't slaves. That is astounding to me. And for everybody who says uh, we're not trying to replace the American history, that's a prime example. Now, Juneteenth, legitimate celebration. I, I was living in Texas at the time when Juneteenth became a holiday. In uh, in uh, 1979, and I happened to be there. It became a fantastic holiday in Texas, particularly because it was in Galveston on that day that Texas finally got word that everyone had been freed and that uh, the Civil War was over. They were a little slow. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have Twitter. So now the whole nation has it. But if you're going to replace the Independence Day celebration of this nation with the celebration of Juneteenth. I'm sorry, I got a problem with that. And I thank you for bringing it to my attention, Dave. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you. I'm going to take a break, step step aside. We have, uh, we have a few more clips we have to share with you. Some response from the White House to the Supreme Court decision about student loans, about the website designer. The designer has spoken out herself. And, of course, the squad members are showing us just how ignorant they are. It's going to be fun. It's Mike Opelka in for Chris Plant on The Chris Plant Show. Hey, Chris here with some exciting news. Now you can listen to me live on the WMAL app. Doesn't matter if you're in your car, in the office, on the go. The WMAL app delivers crystal clear around-the-clock news coverage anywhere with cell service or Wi-Fi. So don't miss a second of your favorite shows. Download the WMAL app today on the Apple App Store or at Google Play Store. It is the Chris Plant Show. Michael Pelka sitting in one more day for my friend Chris Plant, who just looked like he and his uh, his best girl, as he says, had a great time on the cruise. If you haven't seen it, if you're not following Chris 
and the show on social media, then you're missing out. So you, you need to do that. That's something to put on your list. We were uh, spending a little time talking about the shift from classic fireworks to drone shows in the sky. And uh, many of you have pointed out some really, really important things. And the issue of pets is real. The issue of your pets freaking out is real. I don't know about this guy who said, well, all the bees, all the bees are freaking out. I want to know, really, does it affect the bees? Because we've had wars forever. And uh, I don't think there are any bee-free zones because we had wars. Just saying. We'll, we'll get maybe back to that in a little bit. There are other topics that I, I want to bring up, especially on the heels of the Supreme Court decision. And the poll that came out, I think it was an ABC News poll that came over, out over the weekend that shows, and this is, a, this is pretty solid, that 52% of us, 52% agree with the Supreme Court decision when affirmative action comes into play the affirmative action decision 52 percent agree 32 percent don't agree that's huge now when you break it down into uh, gop and independent voters 75 percent of of right thinking people meaning you know republicans conservatives think it's a great decision 52 percent of independents 52% of independents see it as a good decision as well. The left, of course, sees this as a rallying cry to start changing the Supreme Court, to put term limits on it, something that they want for someone else but not themselves, that they also want the right to uh, impeach. We'll get into that. We have some clips from some members of the squad. But I I think it's funny to see the myopia of the left when it comes to these polls. The inability to see that that huge independent number, 52% of independents, which is where this next election is going to be won 490 days from today. 52% of independents look at this decision and say, yeah, that's right. That is right. You should be judged on a merit system and be totally colorblind. But the left, they don't get it. They're just not down. And so we'll get into some of that. We'll also get into the student loan bailout that failed, even though Biden predicted it himself years ago, even though Nancy Pelosi's words stood out and said, no, he can't do this. And how much did we love it? How much schadenfreude was there in the, in the decision that was rendered? And Judge Gorsuch quoted Nancy Pelosi to put the hammer in the coffin, the last nail in the coffin of the student loan bailout. Well, maybe not the last nail. Joe Biden claims he's got another plan. Claims he's got an idea to use the Higher Education Act, which really isn't what this was for, the Higher Education Act. Not for buying votes. We'll talk about that. We'll get into some of that and more of your calls as well. 888-630-9625-888-630-9625. It's Michael Pelka in for Chris Plant on The Chris Plant Show. It is The Chris Plant Show. It's also July 3rd, a Monday, Independence Day Eve. Mike Opelka in for Chris. He returns after the holiday. Thank you. It's also day one of the uh, fortnight of Wimbledon tennis over in London. And I, I don't know if you've ever spent a July 4th out of the country. It's a different experience. My wife and I did that a couple of times in London during the July 4th holiday. But there's still places you can go and you can find Americans celebrating. That's a good thing. I like that when we can find Americans celebrating. Usually all you have to do is look for American troops who are stationed all over the world and you'll find people celebrating America. That's a great thing. We have um, a couple of interesting topics to get to today involving uh, the decisions at the Supreme Court, which I still am amazed 
at how successful. I'm really happy about it. A couple of people are saying, yeah, but what about the gerrymandering, the uh, redistricting problems? Well, the left loved all those decisions and then fast forward 48 hours and they're freaking out. They're stabbing themselves in the head with a fork going, oh, no, no, we're not going to have plumbers and electricians paying for those student loans. Yeah, that's the way that works out. Somewhere between 33 and 50, 50 people in the Biden administration actually working in the White House have in excess of 30000 in student loan debt. And the Biden administration wants to yell at Republicans over this. And I wonder if every day those people look at Joe and go, well, you promised us. You promised us you were, you were going to forgive all that debt. You can't do it. He himself admitted it. Absolutely admitted. Nancy Pelosi called out on it. And the funny thing, I remember, I'm old enough to remember back to March of this year when uh, Bernie Sanders was sitting down with Bill Maher and they were talking about Biden's student loan debt bailout, the scam, the scheme that would have bought votes if they were able to get it through, I believe. That's all it was. This was purchasing votes. And Bill Maher quoted a, uh, a survey that showed what people would do if their student loans were forgiven. And they had already taken all that money. You know, a lot of them got those checks every year. You get your check or whatever. I don't know quite know how it works. But people talked about they would get a check every year or every semester. And then they would take it either supposedly by books or pay tuition. But if those loans are forgiven, those people had ideas on how they were going to spend that money, the money that you and I were going to pay back. This was a brilliant exchange. And again, this is against why people sometimes, I think, question some of what you're saying. Uh, this is a survey, student loan forgiveness recipients. Seventy-three percent of applicants say they are likely to spend their extra money on non-essential, including vacations, smartphone, drugs, and alcohol. They, they admitted that to the pollster. Who is this pollster? Now, Bernie, immediately skeptical. He's shaking his head as he's, he's hearing the statistics, 73% of the applicants said they're likely to spend that extra money on non-essentials, like vacations. When did you have a vacation that the government paid for? Smartphones, a new phone. Do you have a new, brand new phone? Uh, drugs, alcohol. And Bernie immediately dismisses it. Bernie Sanders immediately dismisses it and says, uh, who is this poll? Who is doing the, who are the pollsters here? I need to know. I want answers. The answer kind of surprised him. I, NBC, NBC News. NBC News, and then Bernie's jaw drops. Yeah, it's, it's from a far-left news organization. Many of the numbers were probably 93%. Probably 93%, not 73% of those who were going to, get, to benefit from this student loan bailout. They're going to take that extra money. Now, typically, if, if uh, Elizabeth Warren were here, she would say, well, that that's, that's going to spark the economy. You know, that's, that's putting money back into the economy. If you're a true capitalist, you're going to see a, a pop. No, you're not. You're not. But Bernie had to respond. Um, 52% they are very likely or likely to buy new clothing. 46% they would use the money for vacation and eat out at restaurants. This is why people have a thing about, I, I would never call it free money. Oh, I guess I just did. Yeah, it is. Bernie was just shaking his head the entire time. Bernie Sanders speechless. Imagine that. But that's really the perception of, of what's deep inside a student loan bailout. If you, if you get a loan for a car, you're expected to pay it back. You get a loan for your house, you're expected to pay it back. This, this is such a wonderful decision, but the left can't grasp it. And as a matter of fact, over at MSNBC, Ana Cabrera wanted us to know that this is sexist. This really is unfair for women to not pay back these, to, to not forgive these loans. It's really going to hurt women more because they're going to be expected to pay back a loan that they signed a contract to pay back, right? 
It's interesting to note that nearly two-thirds of the outstanding loan debt right now is held by female students or female borrowers, Melissa Murray. And Can you identify what a, what a female borrower is? Because I, I thought your party had problems with that. So if you're telling us that two-thirds of the outstanding student loan debt is held by females, how are you sure? How can you be so certain, madam? You can't identify what is a woman. So there, I've run rings around you logically, but she wants to let you know this is sexist. This is according to the American Association of University Women, and this organization also says that uh, when a, a woman graduates with a bachelor's degree, she typically owes about $2,700 more than her male counterpart. It takes two years longer for women to pay back loans. Oftentimes, women go into a workforce where there is a gender pay gap. Does this ruling potentially disproportionately impact women? No. No, it doesn't, because your party is the party of we can identify a woman. Now, the gender pay gap may be real. It's illegal if it is. But most places where you see a gender pay gap, it tends to be in things like the sports world where you can actually show a connection between funds being raised thanks to participation of, of audience, tickets being sold, and you can, you can rationalize, you can actually say, well, we sell $10 million worth of tickets for this which is a sport with men, but we only sell $2 million worth of tickets for that in a sport with women. Who's going to get paid more? You cannot have equal pay if equal revenue does not exist. But they're trying to make this, this issue of student loans and affirmative action either racial or genderized. It's in every single situation. That's where this goes. But they're, they're trying to play that card. And I think the, the polling data we showed today, the 52% of Americans are saying, oh, we're good with that. We're absolutely good with the uh, affirmative action ruling. 52%. That shows that people are tired of this. People are fed up with this. Now, I'm, I'm going to make one statement here. I believe the GOP missed an opportunity, a golden opportunity. I think we knew where this was going, if you had paid attention during the early days of the arguments in front of the Supreme Court uh, earlier this year, I think it was February, you would have known that this was going to fall this way, that this was going to go towards the common sense answer of no, you don't make plumbers and electricians and people who paid off their student loans pay for other people. And so you should have had something ready. You should have had a plan ready that maybe said, all right, we recognize you have student loan debt. And we will help you get rid of it if you give the country something of value. If you give the country service, whether it's in the military, the Peace Corps, if you teach in a, in a school system that has kids that are typically disadvantaged, if you, if you work in a rural medical clinic, we will give you X number of dollars in exchange for that. And the GOP didn't see that coming. All they wanted to do was dance and say, yes. So I, I'm, I'm very happy that the victory was won. But I also see a missed opportunity where there could have been a chance to lead. And now the Democrats are coming out with yet another crazy plan using what they call the Higher Education Act to attempt, and it's an attempt, an attempt to try and say, well, here's how we're going to forgive the debt now. But in order to do this under the Higher Education Act, there have to be um, hearings where people are allowed to come up and express their opinions on it. So that's going to be tough for them. And we'll see where this goes. But it's, it's probably going to come all together around next summer, just in time for the election, right? Trust me, this will be a campaign issue. And for the Democrats on Friday, and they did this on Friday extensively, in a, in a couple of different interviews, talk about the members of Congress, and they specifically were citing Republicans in Congress who took uh, PPP loans, the Paycheck Protection Program loans, that gave members of Congress and people all across the country money 
to keep their businesses afloat during the pandemic because the government shut them down. Think of all the small restaurants, the printing companies, all those little companies that got totally shut down during the pandemic. And the government promised them, well, if you'll keep your people and your business going, we'll give you the money. And then when it all breaks out and you hire those same people, you keep them on your staff, we'll forgive the loans. That was the deal. The government forced the businesses to close. And many of these members of Congress have interest in several businesses. And so Biden and Pelosi and several other members of the Democrat Party were saying, well, they certainly accepted the PPP loans. They, they pointed to Matt Gates. They pointed to, uh, they pointed to Marjorie Taylor Greene. They pointed to Carol Miller in West Virginia. Many of them, as more than a dozen. And then somebody went, hold on a second. Didn't Nancy Pelosi have interest in a vineyard that got money? No, it was a hotel. Nancy Pelosi partially owns a California hotel that got PPP money. Yeah, that's right. And uh, the the former law firm of uh, Representative Matt Cartwright out of Pennsylvania, where his wife worked throughout the pandemic, they got a PPP loan. Susie Lee, a Democrat in Nevada, has a regional casino that got a PPP loan. Yeah. They speak out of both sides of their mouth. And I think that's why that argument suddenly went away. That's why that argument that, oh, what about the PPP loans? Well, those PPP loans were apples and oranges. And I'm glad they got caught. All right, let's do a quick check on the phones here. Uh, Donna's in Frederick, Maryland. Hello, Donna. Welcome back to the program. What's up? Uh, Thank you. You know, we have to be aware of the uni party with so many of these issues while we're going through the age of exposure and disclosure, which is beautiful to watch. And I credit the Supreme Court with so much when you think where we were a year ago with Roe v. Wade and now with affirmative action. That being said, this loan thing is fascinating to me because now they're using gender and race. If you take out a loan, you have a contractual obligation to pay it back. I don't care what color you are, what gender, whatever your beliefs are, that's your obligation. That's the way it is. And look, we paid off our college loans. My kids paid off their college loans. So I'm sorry. There's no more handouts. We don't mind hand ups, but not handouts. And there's a distinct difference. And I hope that our lawmakers hear it loud and clear because the public is definitely being shaken to the core with all of this. And it's not going to bode well for them in the end. You're right, Donna. And thank you for that call. Well said all the way around. Let's go to Skokie, Illinois, the north side of Chicago. Will listening on the great WLS. Hello, Will. Welcome to the program. Good morning and happy fourth weekend. Thank yeah, you, the sir. thing that's, that's interesting here when you listen to all these commentators on the left, they always talk about emotion. They never talk about the actual law or the actual constitution. Gee, the president can't spend money willy nilly. He has to have Congress come in. Gee, we shouldn't discriminate against people based on their race. Gee, all this this is the basis of the constitution, but their whole mindset is in a different world. And I think a lot of these people believe the claptrap they're putting out. It's just their mindset is just twisted. They think that the government is there to give stuff to them. you got to go yeah. through the legislature. Yeah. And going through the legislature is hard. And that's not a, that's not a defect. That's a, that's a feature, you know? So anyway, well, that's a good one. Thank you. Good, thank good, you. Good well, well said, Will. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He's right on everything he said. And it relates to the reality that your feelings... No matter how hard you try to make them, your feelings aren't facts. You can start with facts, and sometimes those facts will give you good feeling. But it rarely works the other way around, does it? So much to get to today. It's Michael Pelka in for Chris Plant on The Chris Plant Show. It is the Chris Plant Show. Michael Pelka in for Chris. He returns after the holiday, and we appreciate you hanging out with us. So many things to get to. I have not gotten to Donald Trump's statements, both at the Moms for Liberty event in Philadelphia on Friday, and then the huge rally 
really huge rally in South Carolina that Mr. Trump held. I, I was watching it and I was stunned how many people were there. And once again, Donald Trump capable of captivating a crowd for over an hour where Joe Biden would have been running away quickly. We all saw him. And I, you know, last Friday we talked about Joe Biden kind of scurrying away when uh, Nicole Wallace was thanking him for the interview and then throwing to break. But Joey got up and kind of sprinted out. Uh, the amazing thing there is now more people than ever are speculating that Joe had to go because Joe had to go. So I feel vindicated there. I know a lot of people were saying it was insensitive, it was silly, it was rude, it was stupid. But you watch the video yourself and tell me if Joe wasn't here in the train needing to leave the station and he had to get up and go, he's 80 years old. It's, it's not something he can stop. All right, I'm going to take a couple more calls on the, uh, the student loans but, and then we'll, we'll wrap up that topic. And next hour we'll get to Trump and his rallies. There is uh, more dumb stuff from Democrats, but that's kind of like a daily thing. So let's quickly hit the phones. Joel in uh, Virginia. Hello, Joel. Welcome to the program. Oh, Michael, you're awesome as always. Again, happy fourth. Hardworking, taxpaying, senior citizen, still working, paid off my student loans. My son paid off his student loans. But, you know, that, that research that they did, I can't believe they said female. I mean, how, how horrible is that to label them all as females? Did they not go through and check the boxes? Were they non-binary? Were they in transition? Were they, those are all females? I mean, we have a Supreme Court justice that can't even define what a female or a woman is. I mean, that seems a little bit out of place to me, given our atmosphere today in our world and society where these labels are so important that they would go off and say they identified all those people with those student loans as females. That's true. How do they know? And I always tell everybody the uh, the universal principle here is if there's an apple, there's usually a banana. If you know what I mean. Thank you, Joel. Appreciate it. Carol's uh, listening on WLS in Naperville, Illinois. I can't even say my old home state's name, Carol. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, They want their loan payment to be paid by us. That was our favor to them. Now they want another favor. Let us pay for it. It's like spoiled children. Gimme, gimme, gimme. I don't truly is. So. It. It, tr- it truly is. It truly is, Carol. You're so right. They are like the little children in the cereal aisle throwing a temper tantrum until we buy them the super sugar choco flakes with the decoder ring inside. Oh, boy. Second hour wrapped up. Michael Pelka back for a third hour of the Chris Plant Show on this Independence Day Eve. Come on back. Come on back. 